In this video, we are talking about the physiology of digestion. So, digestion is the process of uh, breaking down of some food materials with the help of some enzymes which are provided by the digestive glands. Now, the very first question that prevails is that why we need food? That why we are requiring the food? So, as the digestive system is altogether related with the food, so this is a very preliminary question that comes in our mind that why we are taking food? So, we need food to provide us with the energy for our daily activities. So, we need energy for our daily activities that may be your uh, walking, it may be your running process or you are going to some marketplace. So, you need energy for those processes. And the second thing is that there is a process which is called as homeostasis. So, homeostasis is the maintenance of the equilibrium in the body. So, that means that you have to equilibrize all the processes that are going on inside your body. So, one major process related to the homeostasis is the maintenance of the body temperature. So, we need a lots of energy for that maintenance and that's why we need food for that particular activity. So, maintaining a healthy body. So, overall, all the processes that are present, that are going on inside your body, so all the organ systems, if they have to function very well, they need energy for that. So, that's why we are taking in food. So, we are taking in food to grow new cells and the tissues in our body. And we need energy to repair our body cells also. So, we need energy to repair the worn out tissues. So, whenever you sleep, your worn out tissues are repaired with the help of that energy. So, directly or indirectly, voluntarily or non-voluntarily, you need energy to maintain whole of your body. Now, for this, we need some nutrients. So, we have a concept of balanced diet. So, that particular diet should have appropriate amounts of some specific nutrients that are required uh, to maintain a vertebrate body. So, as we know that the main types of nutrients are like first are the carbohydrates, second are the proteins and third are the fats. So, these are the main types of nutrients. So, first of all, we are talking about the carbohydrates. So, these are generally known as the sugars and the main carbohydrates in the food, they are starch and the sugars. So, here you can have starch, you can have cellulose. So, these give rise to the last product which is called as the glucose. And various sugars like fructose, maltose, so they can give rise to another types of end products also. So, sucrose, glucose and maltose, they are also the forms of sugar. So, another type of sugar is the cellulose. So, this is a type of carbohydrate that cannot be digested in humans because we cannot produce the enzyme cellulase for the digestion of the cellulose. So, that's why we cannot eat raw plants which are containing cellulose. But many of the invertebrates or non-chordates 
they are feeding upon cellulose very heavily because they are they are capable of producing either their own cellulase or they can produce cellulase with the help of some microorganisms inside their bodies so if we talk about termites so termites are altogether dependent upon the wood or the cellulose as their food so as the wood is containing a huge amounts of cellulose so they require the enzyme cellulase for the digestion so they maintain a level of cellulase with the help of the symbiotic microorganisms in their gut so overall cellulose is the another type of a carbohydrate but we don't need it because we cannot digest it now the next type of nutrient is the proteins the proteins they are composed of smaller molecules which are called as amino acids so we all know that proteins are long chains of amino acids and these proteins they should be broken down into smaller parts for absorption so as proteins can have large molecular weights and they can have large sizes so these cannot be absorbed directly into the cells so first of all these proteins voities they have to be digested they have to be broken down into smaller parts and those smaller parts are chemically digested into some basic monoforms which can be like glucose oh sorry your amino acids so that means that amino acids can be one of the final products in the digestion of the proteins now why we need proteins so proteins are needed for building up new cells in our body and to repair the worn out tissues so proteins are very very important building blocks of the cells and second thing which is very very important that complex proteins they may function as enzymes that carry out specific reactions in our body so the proteins they are also used as enzymes in our body so the proteins that can be taken directly through different kinds of foods and those will be digested in our alimentary canal with the help of the enzymes so next type of nutrients they are the fats so one thing is to be very very clear that fats give us two things first is the glycerol and second are the fatty acids so whenever the fats are digested they give rise to the fatty acids and glycerol and these fatty acids they are taken up by the cells for producing the energy now second thing is that fats they provide us with twice as much energy as the carbohydrates so this is a very very good source of energy in our body so fats can provide up to near to twice energy as the carbohydrates so fats can be found in foods like butter and cheese so this is very obvious and fats they are stored under our skin so that is under the subcutaneous part of the skin to insulate our body against the heat loss and there is one more phenomenon which is called as shivering thermogenesis so shivering thermogenesis refers to the formation of heat inside the body and uh, some animals which show the habit of hibernation they perform this particular shivering thermogenesis process so what they do is that they eat and eat before going for the hibernation and they become fatter they become big so when they hibernate 
they use that stored fat for making the heat inside the body so that's why it is called as shivering thermogenesis shivering refers to the shaking or the shivering of the body in cold temperatures so whenever the animals they hibernate in cold regions so they get their body heat by the process of shivering thermogenesis thermo refers to heat and genesis refers to the production so this is the production of the heat inside those animals so fats are the main constituents or you can say the building blocks for producing those that heat which is needed by the animals now these nutrients when they are taken up inside an animal if they are smaller in size now here it is very clearly stated that if these like uh, if this is glucose or they are amino acids so they are very small in size so as they are small in size they can pass through the cell membrane and they can get inside the cell so they are taken up by the cell directly from the intestine so if you have these smaller sized molecules so they can be directly taken up by the cells but if the nutrients like starches the proteins and the fats they are present in the intestine so they cannot pass into the cells because they are very big in size so what we need is that we have to break these larger molecules into smaller parts so what we need we need enzymes so this is the function of the enzymes that they are responsible for the breakdown of the substrates now enzymes are the complex proteins that speed up the rate of the chemical reactions that we know so as enzymes are called as catalysts so they speed up the reaction rates so we have got specific enzymes for specific reactions so enzymes they remain unchanged at the end of the chemical reactions so this is a very characteristic feature of the enzymes now enzymes can break larger molecules into smaller ones enzymes they act like chemical scissors so they can break larger chains into smaller chains from specific regions so that's why it is called that they act as scissors they can break down large molecules into smaller molecules to speed up the process of digestion so if you have smaller pieces of the food you have larger surface areas so if you have large surface areas that means you can have good amounts of enzymes which are acting on that food so if you have larger surface areas more enzymes can act on that food in shorter times so that means you can increase the speed of the reaction now what are substrates they are the raw food that you take in so it is again uh, converted into smaller pieces both mechanically and chemically so they are said to be as in mechanical and chemical digestion processes now students we are taking up a typical vertebrate digestive system what are the parts of this system so first of all the very first part is the mouth cavity so if you see the mouth cavity it is 
followed by the second part which is called as the pharynx. Now here, the pharynx, it leads into the third part which is the esophagus. Now esophagus is a tube-like structure which is taking the food from the mouth into the stomach. Now the stomach, it is a spacious chamber which provides a space for both mechanical and chemical digestions. The first part of the stomach is known as the cardiac part. So if you go with the, the first part of the stomach, this is the cardiac part of the stomach. And the second part is the pyloric part. This is the smaller part of the stomach. So the food first of all reaches the cardiac part and here we have a valve which is called as the cardiac sphincter that is present at the junction of the esophagus and the cardiac stomach. So here we have the cardiac sphincter. Next thing is that the stomach is followed by the small intestine. So as we all know that uh, the small intestine is divided into three parts. The first part is the duodenum, second part is the jejunum and third part is the ileum. So the distal part of the stomach, that means the second part, second is the pyloric part. The pyloric part of the stomach, it opens into the duodenum through a valve which is called as the pyloric sphincter. So pyloric sphincter, it is followed by the duodenum. So the food enters into duodenum through the pyloric sphincter from the stomach. Now the ducts from the liver and the pancreas, they are also pouring their secretions into this particular part, the duodenum. So that means the bile from the liver through the gallbladder and the pancreatic juice from the pancreas, it is going for the duodenal part at this region. Now the duodenum, it leads into the jejunum and last we have the ileum. The last section of the elementary canal is called as the large intestine. So large intestine is divided into two basic parts, which is the colon and the rectum. So here you can well see that colon is leading into the rectum. So here again, the ileum is opening into the intestine or the colon part of the intestine through a valve, which is called as ileoceliac valve. So at the junction of the small intestine and the large intestine, we have got the ileoceliac valve. So a vermiform appendix is also present at the site of this valve, which is now considered to be as the vestigial organ in case of humans. Now the colon, it leads to the second part, which is called as the rectum. So this part or the rectum is storing the food which has to pass out of the body. Now this rectum, it is followed by the anus. Now the distal end of this part is guarded by the anal sphincter. So here, the anal sphincter can be controlled voluntarily by the human. So that is the overall anatomy of the human or the typical vertebrate digestive system. Now if we talk something about the histology of our digestive system, the wall of the entire elementary canal is typically made up of four layers. So the, these are having four layers. The first layer is the serosa. 
Sirosa is the outermost layer of the elementary canal. Second layer is the muscularis. So in muscularis, we have got two types of muscles. First, we have the circular muscles, then we have the longitudinal muscles. Third layer is the submucosa. And fourth layer is the mucosa. So if we take into consideration all the three or the four layers, mucosa is the innermost layer and serosa is the outermost layer. Now throughout the length of the elementary canal, the epithelium is provided by the gland cells. So these are the gland cells which are producing the glandular secretions or the digestive enzymes to digest our ingested food. So this is the histology of the alimentary canal. And uh, if we go for the esophagus, there is some difference than the whole of the alimentary canal. In esophagus, the serosa or the outermost layer is absent and here the outermost layer is made up of some fibrous kind of tissue which is called as fibrosa so here in the esophagus we don't have serosa we have got fibrosa layer which is fibrous in nature so students that was uh, overall the anatomy and the histology of the typical vertebrate elementary canal. Now, we are talking about the digestion in case of a typical vertebrate. So here we have taken man. So what is the process of digestion? So first of all, the animal or a vertebrate, it will ingest the food, it will take in the food and that food is subjected to the first kind of digestion which is the mechanical phase of digestion. So mechanical phase refers to that it is the physical part of the digestion and in humans or the vertebrates, most vertebrates, this mechanical part is taken up by the teeth. So when we ingest the food, it is taken up in the mouth and the teeth, they are giving you the mechanical phase of digestion. So it takes up, it takes place in the mouth. Now second thing is that the mouth, it is followed by the next part which is the pharynx. So when the food, after mechanical digestion, it moves to the pharynx, a process happens which is called as deglutition. So deglutition is the swelling, swallowing of the food. So before it, before the swallowing, inside the mouth, the second kind of phase starts, which is the chemical phase. So chemical phase is that it is the digestion of the food with the help of the enzymes, with the help of the chemicals. So after mechanical disruption of the food inside mouth, we have got the second thing which is the saliva. So saliva is containing an enzyme which is called as salivary amylase. So in the mouth itself, we can say that both mechanical as well as chemical digestion, it occurs. Now this digested food, it is absorbed by the body in coordination with the circulatory and lymphatic systems. So when the food it reaches in the intestine, it is subjected to the absorption. So this is the third part, which is the absorption. First was the ingestion of the food, taking in of the food. Second was the digestion, that means the breaking of the food into smaller parts. 
to increase the surface area. So that was divided into mechanical and chemical phase. And third process is the absorption of the food. Now, after absorption, the undigested materials, they pass through the anus into the external environment. That means this is a process of ejection. So this is the process of removal of the waste products from the anus or from the elementary canal. So this slide gives you the whole process of the digestion, absorption and ejection. Now, what are the main enzymes, what are the main category of the enzymes which are involved in whole process of the digestion? So first of all, we have the carbohydrates. So as the name suggests that carbohydrates, they are acting on the carbohydrates and they are digesting the carbohydrates and they are producing simple sugars. So simple refers to the monomer of the sugar or we can say it as glucose. So the glucose, it can directly be taken up by the cells. So the cells can take up the glucose and use it for making the energy. This process is called as assimilation. So to use the byproducts or to use the end products of digestion to make energy is called as the assimilation process. Okay, the second type of enzymes are the proteases. So proteases, they act upon the proteins. And as the proteins, they are made up of amino acids. So proteins, they are digested with the help of proteases. And the final product of this digestion is the amino acids. So amino acids are produced and these can be taken up by the cells to form energy. The third type of main enzymes are the lipases. So lipases, they digest the fats. So here, as we have discussed earlier, that the fats will produce fatty acids and glycerol. So these fatty acids, they are used up by the cells for making energy. So students, these are the main types of the enzymes which are used to digest the three types of basic nutrients which are taken up along with the food.